we'll check in with Julian a bit later on. Let's get my next guests out. They are many things, actors, some writers, but for most of us, they will always be part of the best pop act ever to wear ballets, tartan cloaks and leg warmers. From Spandau Ballet, it's Gary and Martin Kemp. <laughs> Good to see you, boys. Come Gary and Martin Ken, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited to see you again. It's lovely. You look in great shape. You look in great shape. You're both, what are you, 51 and 53, is that right? Uh, 53, yeah. 51, 53, that's right, wow, yeah. congratulations. Well, you look fabulous. You really are. Well, we, you... we, we spent so long abusing ourselves, I think. Now we're making up for it. You know. Pickled. <laughs> Pickled you are. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, but you guys have stayed pretty close to thought, because, you know, I'm yeah. sure you know, they share the name Kemp, which makes them brothers. Uh, and so, <laughs> you, you but you survived being in a band and have actually stayed close and stayed friendly. Yeah, I mean, Gary and I, we've had a great relationship. I think partially because we're very different people. We have very different personalities. And uh, we both know that, and we both know our strong areas and our weak areas. Yeah. And uh, so we, we don't really tread on each other's toes. Okay. Yeah, I grew up with sort of dulcimers and guitars on my wall, and uh, he had pictures of Bruce Lee. And I was scared of him, and he wasn't scared of me. So you were the musician from day one, and you were more of a sporty kid? Yeah, I think if Gary had come home one day and said, uh, I've just had a trial for Arsenal and I'm playing for the first 11, I would have been really upset with him. Yeah. But that sort of thing never happened. But here's a weird thing I didn't notice, because I, 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 when I first read this, I thought, you must be twins, because you were born with one kidney. One functioning kidney, one fu yeah, oh, I that's see. right. And you yeah. were born with three. Three, yeah. And yeah. you're better looking than him as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just rubbing it in, really, aren't you? Well, listen, I'm carrying Sorry, Gary, it for but you know it's true. Yeah. If he ever needs the other one, I'll give it to him. Uh, it's, but... it's good for weight, you know, weight loss. <laughs> Climbing up hills on my bike, yeah. So you have... Uh, that's a weird thing. Do you have it's the... Weird thing. Where is the third one? Can we have a look at it? It's floating somewhere. It's just floating around inside. Yeah. I mean, I love my mum. We were talking to her once about smoking and, uh, you know, cos she, she used to smoke and when she was alive and... Um, and, uh, and she said all that nonsense about smoking through pregnancy. I smoke through pregnancy, and look at you two. Yeah, one <laughs> kidney, two, three <laughs> kidneys, and a brain tumour. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but fortunately, you're through that, and the kidneys are still working for both of you, yeah, even yeah. if they're in a, yeah, an yeah, odd yeah. kind of configuration. Um, when the last time I spoke to the boys, they'd just come back with Spandau, and I never thought that would happen, because there was a period of some bad feeling and some kind of fallout, and then you managed to patch it up with the whole band. You were back bigger than ever, those huge gigs, one at the O2, yeah. I mean, that must have been a great feeling. Three at the O2, yeah, yeah, Three yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's now more to come. You've now got more kind of Spandau events lined up, is that right? Yeah, we are currently working on a film, and um, it's a documentary for the cinema. Uh, it's called Soul Boys of the Western World, and, um, and a book, and uh, that'll be out next year, and I pretty much guarantee we're going to do it again next year. So you're going to tour again? It, I, I hope know. so. I hope so. I really do. I mean, it was an amazing year. You know, I, I think I've never laughed as much, belly laughed as much in my whole life as that year. And it was just a great time because you, you've got to imagine, you know, for 15 years, it was like carrying this monkey on your back, you know, this argument with your best friends. And you, everywhere you went, you didn't want to bump into them in case they were there. And so just that time of being able to take that away and that worry and that stress away was just fantastic. And get and, to know him again. And how was it on the road now? Because presumably you're all being a bit old and a bit more sensible, perhaps. I guess it was a, a quieter kind of experience. It was different. Experience. It was very different because, you know, before it was all about what was going to happen after the gig, you know, at the party. And this year it was... Last, well, last three years ago, it was all about the show. Which uh, I really enjoyed. Yeah, the dressing room. We like uh, the dressing room was fantastic. Actually, I mean, there was there seems to be uh, less tension. You know, we weren't worried about the sales of the last album. Mm. You know, it was kind of stuff that had already been proven, and yeah. and uh, the reactions were always good. But uh, you know, I think we're all the way within a few days. We'd all sort of settled back into our normal selves. You know, jokes that were totally puerile and juvenile right. that no one else would ever understand. You know, sort of forty five minutes of um, Tony in his underpants with. Big glass of red wine in his hand, you know. What, what, and just, now, what's that about? He, so he, this is part of the show. It's, it's, part of his, no, it's, it's how gentlemen relax, I think. You know. he, he, so he strips down to his pants after the show. He likes a shower after the show, okay, and well, then that's he, you know, and he might spend a little. He bit likes of a shower time. before and after uh, the show. So hold it. So he's just sitting there in his underpants. Yeah, we all do. We you're all come on stage. It, you're why don't you just, wet why you just go back to your hotel rooms? <laughs> <laughs> it's called bonding. So you like to sit around in your pants <laughs> chatting about the gig? Well, 
Oh, you, we have a few glasses of champagne. This is one of the weirdest things chat. I've ever heard in my life. And so, will this be in the film, the whole pants after the show experience? <laughs> uh, Access all areas? If there was ever a secret camera in there, it will be in the film, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's nice that you're <laughs> that relaxed with each other. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it was so fantastic. I can't tell you, it was kind of just to have that year of getting your best friends back together was just so lovely. That's a nice yeah, thing. I, 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 would, I would say it was the best year of my life. I would so dream far. quite a lot about, you know, because what I went on with, with uh, you know, me and Tony and, you know, the court case, and I would have, you know, I dreamt for 10 years of meeting him and it would either be good or bad resolution. And uh, to actually get that over, I remember meeting him in a in a pub um, for the first time in all, and since the court case. And uh, we got a bit off our chests and then he just raised the glass and he said, that's it, it's over. And uh, nice. we got on better than ever. And then he stripped to his pants and the <laughs> stripped to his pants, <laughs> but it was his beer I was drinking. That was the, uh, <laughs> that that was the, the, command, that yeah. was the deal closer. <laughs> OK, the guys are back on TV. I mean, you've seen them as actors and uh, The Craze was the big film for you guys. And as a result of that, that I guess that's what has led to your latest TV project. Yeah, uh, in a way, it's the same kind of area. The, uh, the new project is really interesting. It's kind of... Uh, what it's about is the history of gangland Britain. And we go to uh, several different cities around the country. And Gary will look at the historical side of a gang that used to control that area. And I'll look at the gang that controls it now. So yeah. you look at the past and the present? Yeah, yeah. Originally I said, um, yeah, I'm only going to do dead people. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you were fearful <laughs> yeah. of he, retribution. He out, Jonathan. Slightly fearful of retribution. So you're slightly the braver one. <laughs> yeah. Or the more stupid one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I couldn't work out which. But... <laughs> Mm. Well, it's pretty gritty. I mean, it's in that. Uh, it's a bit like, a bit like Sunday night called the midwife. Yeah. So yeah, know. it's not, it's not, it's not called the midwife or Downton Abbey. It's a different kind of. Yeah. It was a bit gritty on a Sunday night. Uh, but I guess there is a risk if you're going out and talking about real gangs that you know you you could upset some people. How do you guard against that? Um, at the time, to be honest, you don't think about it. If you're doing your job and somebody says uh, this is the area, this are, these are the people we're going to talk to, the kind of the more dangerous the person, the more you want to do it. To be honest, and and there was uh, I was reading that there was one moment where you were speaking to a surgeon mm. in Glasgow who has to fix a lot of these young men who find yeah. themselves in these violent situations, uh, and and it was it was difficult for you. Oh, she showed me a piece of uh, CCTV footage that was just awful. It was uh, a piece of gang violence that happened outside of a nightclub, and it was just about passed by being caught in the middle of it, and it just frightened the life out of me because my boy's 20 you know he uses those type of nightclubs and uh, he could have got caught in the middle of it as well and um it kind of hits home yeah it, it was just probably the worst piece of, of film i've ever seen in my life and it was actually actually so disturbing it, it couldn't be included into the uh, show was that... I mean, you know it really each show is about a city that's uh, so. Um, the first episode is about Glasgow, and then we, we Liverpool, Manchester, London. There's a couple of shows in London, uh, Birmingham, etc. And uh, and so really looking at how a city is sort of develops and changes, or does it? You know, compare and contrast between the past and the present. And and it's kind of like who do you think you are, but for gangs? Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, miss, uh, do you miss doing EastEnders? Because I, I was under the impression when you left they were going to keep the door open for you to, for Steve to come back in, and then... That, well, that well is... I, I was under that impression as well. And I, went, I remember I went in one day and I told him that um, I'd done three and a half years there. And, I and told that, him, well, he was a popular, popular yeah, character. Yeah, Steve Owen, he was a popular character, and I did three and a half years, so I thought time was up to move on, you know. I went in and I told him, and I said, uh, I'm going to move on. And they said, great, you know, we keep the door open for you, we never get rid of the big characters. So I thought, oh, that's great, you know, got something to go back to. And then uh, the next day I went in and they called me back into the office and they said, um, Martin, where are you going? And I said, ITV. Uh-oh. Two weeks later, I went in, read the script, Steve Owen, blown up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let, just a let, that, let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't worry. I blew myself up. Don't worry about that. Uh, well, that's a shame, though. It's coming kind of back as a zombie. Yeah. Well, it's a shame. Yeah, he's a great character. But listen, I had some great fun. In fact, I, I would say, David, three and a half years, it was probably the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. Well, look, I, I hope uh, to see you touring again next year. I'd love to see Spandau back on the road. I don't know if you have concrete pants yet, but... I would like to. Yeah, yeah, it'd be great. And I, I would like, ideally, to get the chance to come backstage and see Tony in his underpants. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you should maybe... Bring your own and get comfortable. Look, you have a big screen behind you on the stage. Why don't you just project out at the end of the gig? Because, yeah. you know, it's like at the end of the party, you don't know how to get people out of your house. <laughs> that would do it. <laughs> do that. Now, you'd never see the O2 empty quicker than a shot of Tony Hadley on a giant screen in his pants drinking red wine. He's only yeah. since the 70s, too. <laughs> 
Uh, it's great to see you both again. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, join me in saying thank, thank you to Gary and Martin Kemp. Good luck with the show, guys. Good luck.